I want to acknowledge your decision to listen to a podcast today that could empower you to start to feel incredible in your life. I mean, that says a lot about the kind of person that you are. And in order to set up our conversation about these three simple decisions that will make you feel incredible, I just want to underscore how important it is that you don't just listen today, but that you take action and you try what I'm about to teach you. Because you don't change your life by just thinking about changing it. You change your life by doing something. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The decisions that you make to do something or not. And so many times in life, you will find yourself stuck in this gap between knowing what you need to do versus doing it. Knowing isn't enough. And I can give you a bazillion examples of this. You can know what you need to do in order to be healthier. You know that you need to exercise, yet you don't make the decision to do it. You may know that you need to work on your resume if you'd like to get a new job, yet you don't make the decision to sit down and work on it. You may know that you need to call a particular person back. It's going to be a difficult conversation. You think about it all, that, but you don't do it. There's this huge gap between knowing something and making the decision to do it. And one of the reasons why it can be really hard to bridge this gap is because you don't feel motivated. You don't feel motivated to exercise. You don't feel motivated to work on your resume. We're going to talk about the other reason why you can get stuck in this gap of knowing what you need to do, but not doing it. And the reason why you can get so stuck is false confidence. You have this false confidence about what you're capable of or how your decisions are going to impact you. And I'm going to give you an example that I know that you are going to relate to. And then we're going to get down to these three decisions and how false confidence is a part of this. It happens to me all the time. In fact, false confidence just swooped in and bit me in the rear end last week. Let me, let me tell you how it impacted my decisions. So I was out in Vegas for work and I was there because I was giving a speech for Keller Williams, a big real estate company. There were 17 thousand people in the audience. And after the speech and the meet and greet and all that stuff, my team and I, we went out and we had a great dinner together. We were celebrating, we were wrapping up a great week, and it was an early night. I love an early night. And so we all kind of piled into the Uber and we were heading back to the hotel and we were getting back to the hotel. It was only 8.45 p.m. I mean, that's kind of amazing. I'm not one of these people that needs to close down the night in Vegas. And I also had a plan. I had been looking forward to going up to my room after dinner, and I was going to run a hot bath, and then I was going to soak in the tub, and the hotel that I stay in always gives you these little packets of salt, and so I can pour the salt in the tub, and I can soak in the tub, and it's quiet in my hotel room. There's no dogs, no family. I can just relax, and then I could pack up my stuff you know, beforehand, so then I would climb into bed, I'd get a good night's sleep, and then I'd wake up early enough to be able to get a workout in and still get out the door for my 6.30 a.m. flight. I mean, I was so excited. But as we're heading back to the hotel in the Uber and we're cranking the tunes and the group was like rocking on the high of an incredible week in Vegas and the great dinner that we had, I just didn't want the day to end. I mean, do you know how hard it is to say while you're getting out of an Uber, this is great. What a great week. I love you guys. I'm going to give you a hug right now because I got an early flight and I'm going to head upstairs. And you know, in the long run, you know that saying good night is the best decision. Why? Because it's going to make you feel incredible tomorrow morning. But then Someone in the group says, as you're pulling up to the hotel and you're starting to say goodnight, what? Uh, you're not going to bed, are you? Come on. We're in Vegas. Hang out a little. Let's have a nightcap. You've been in a moment like this a thousand times, haven't you? Do you stay out a little longer and hang out with your friends? Or do you call it a night? And you get a good night's sleep. Now, sitting here listening to me, you're like, oh, you get a good night's sleep. No, you don't. No, you not, 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 that's not the decision that you make. Come on, let's weigh the options here. 
You're, you're, you're having a great night. Do you join your friends in having a drink or smoking a joint or eating that dessert? Or do you say no? Because you've either had enough or it's just not your thing. That's the decision. And the mistake that you and I make is we base the decision on how it's going to feel right now instead of making a decision based on how it impacts you in the long run. It is so easy to say, oh, you're right. I'll stay out a little bit longer. (laughs) But easy decisions make your life hard. When you learn how to make a hard decision, life gets easier. And that was the exact situation I was in last week in Las Vegas. I could have easily said, you guys go have some fun. I need to go to bed. I got an early flight. I want to go take a bath. But see, here's what happened. False confidence comes swooping in. This is not about motivation. This is about false confidence. It swoops right in in that moment when your emotions are all swirling around and you literally think that your decision in the moment will not impact you in the future. And as I say to my friends, oh, you're right. I'll just stay out a little bit longer. What happens? Oh my God, next thing you know, it's freaking midnight. You've talked about nothing. Your flight hasn't changed. It's leaving at 6.30 in the morning. You still have to pack. You haven't taken a bath. You're definitely not exercising in the morning anymore. But somehow when you said, oh, sure, I'll just stay out a little bit longer, you had this false confidence that you could somehow handle it all, that somehow time would freeze for you, just you, you awesome human being, Mel Robbins, and that this decision in the moment to just scrap all the plans that you had, it's not going to impact me tonight or tomorrow morning, that somehow, Mel, you're the only human being who's not going to be affected by staying up too late. Of course I was affected by this decision. I didn't take my bath. I still had to get up at 5 a.m., but this time, not to exercise, I had to pack. I mean, I was racing around like a lunatic in that hotel room at 5 a.m. trying to get myself packed up so that I could catch the flight on time. I didn't feel incredible. I felt horrible. I was mad at myself. I had that feeling that I'm sure you felt before where you're like exhausted. And now you're on the way to the airport and you're like, why the hell did I do that to myself? I could have felt so different right now. And there's so many examples of false confidence. I mean, it's everywhere in life. And one other thing I want to underscore here is that it is so easy to see this in other people. Like the true skill is catching it in yourself, which I did not do in Vegas last week. You can see it in other people. Like, for example, I'm sure you have a friend. We all have a friend who literally you cannot understand why they continue to date losers, people that treat them like garbage. And your friend will be like, I know, I know, I know he doesn't give me the attention I deserve, but he's trying, he's trying to improve. And you can spot their false confidence a mile away. You're like, you're deluding yourself. You are not a special princess. You are not going to turn this frog into a prince. He is not going to magically turn from a person who treats you badly to a person who treats you well, and you know it, but you are falsely confident. Boom, you can see it in someone else. Maybe you spot this false confidence in your boss every time they walk into a meeting. They're like, so uh, we're going to add this huge project to your workload, and it's due in a month, and no, I'm not hiring anybody else, but we can get it done. You're thinking, what planet do you live on? Like you are deluding yourself with this false confidence. Or your sister declares, I'm going to lose 30 pounds, but she's not changing her diet or exercising at all. I mean, based on the way the world works, that's not going to work. But false confidence, it always convinces you that the laws of nature and science and common sense, well, they don't apply to you. You can just declare this stuff and suddenly time shrinks or your body does or people magically change around you. That even though it is the wrong decision or the wrong approach for anyone else on the planet to do it, somehow, somehow it's going to work for you. I mean, I do this all the time. I literally say, you know what? I think I'm going to clean out my closet over lunch today because I think I can get it done in 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm, Mel. Exactly. You know what happens in 30 minutes? I tear everything apart and then I've got a gigantic pile on the floor of my closet. False confidence is what created that. 
Yeah, Mel, you're the exception. You're the one person that can clean out an entire closet in 30 minutes flat and get everything hung up, color coordinated and folded perfectly like you're at a store at the mall. Mm hmm. Time stops for you, Mel Robbins. A night of partying won't give you a hangover. Your metabolism is superhuman. This is false confidence. It's when you ignore common sense, the research, the science, what you know to be true. And in fact, researchers and psychologists have a word for this because it's such a well-established cognitive bias. It's called the overconfidence effect. It's like this magic potion that we drink where you delude yourself into thinking, oh, you know, if I were giving somebody else advice, I would tell them to go to bed at 845 so they can catch their flight and exercise and take a bath and get a good night's sleep. But if I am in the situation, I can make a decision and those same rules do not apply to me and they will not affect me. And I'm explaining this concept of false confidence because it's killing your mornings. I'm serious about this. False confidence is showing up in three places every single morning. And it's very sneaky, by the way. Very, very sneaky how this false confidence is showing up in derailing your mornings. And when I put a spotlight on these three sneaky moments every morning, you're going to get it immediately. And once you see it, this is the cool part. It empowers you to make a different decision starting tomorrow morning. Make a decision that is based in science and research and evidence and common sense. Decisions that will make you feel incredible. And every single morning that you wake up, these same three decisions, it's going to be there. And you know what else is going to be there? False confidence. You have to make these decisions every single morning. Because what you decide to do every morning in these three very simple, very sneaky moments. The decisions that you make either create an upward spiral or a downward one. And after our conversation today, you get to decide because you're going to know the consequences of each one of these decisions. We're going to go deep into the research after we unpack all three decisions, but let me just highlight what's available to you and why these three simple decisions make you feel incredible. Because based on the research, these three simple decisions improve your mood. They make you feel more in control. They give you more energy and focus. Helps your gut health. It'll lower your stress and anxiety and depression. It supports you in getting a better night's sleep at the end of the day. And it helps you wake up and feel more energized and present and boost your mood. How freaking cool is that? And so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to set up each one of these three decisions kind of the same way that I set up the scenario earlier, you know, where your friends are wanting you to stay out later, where I want to put you right at the scene because I want you to really stop and consider these moments and the decision that you have to do something or not. These are not life and death decisions. You're an adult. You get to choose just like you get to choose whether you stay out or whether you make a decision to go up and take care of yourself and on your face may seem kind of obvious, but do me a favor and don't dismiss the power of what you're about to learn simply because these decisions are super simple and these three moments every morning just pass you by right now. I want you to really understand the depth and the implications of each one of these three decisions, whether it's a positive implication or the negative implication, because I think it's a mistake to not make these decisions, all right? Because when you really allow yourself to consider and discern what I'm saying, I know it's going to motivate and inspire you to try this in your life. Imagine someone who is lying in bed, okay? You can just picture them in their bed. The alarm rings. And it rings an hour before they need to get up and get out of bed. Because this person, person A, loves, loves to hit the snooze button. Their routine when the alarm rings is hit the snooze, drift back to sleep. Let the alarm ring again, hit the snooze, drift back to sleep. Hit the alarm again, drift back to sleep. And they do this literally until they have no choice but to drag themselves out of bed. They are rotting away in bed for an hour every morning. That is person A. Then 
I want you to imagine person B. When the alarm rings, you see them go, oh, oh, they don't want to get out of bed. But they throw off the sheets, they roll out of bed, they stand up, they walk toward the bathroom, and they start their day. Now, I want you to just stop and think for a minute and think about this moment. Which one is the better decision? If you think about decision A, to hit the snooze alarm over and over and over again, versus person B, the person who just makes a decision, even though I feel like to just roll out of bed and start the day, which person would you hire? Which person would you want to date? Which person do you wish you were? If you had $1,000 and you could place a bet on which person was going to have a better day, Who would you put your money on? I mean, from a common sense standpoint and a logic standpoint, you know that making the decision to get out of bed is the harder decision in the morning, but it makes your life easier and better in the long run. And this is the thing about a decision. You can see it objectively, but false confidence skews your decision-making because Let's you and I climb into bed right now, okay? Let's climb into bed and let's really experience how false confidence makes person A do what they're doing. I used to do this. I literally used to be like, okay, well, if I have to get out of bed by seven o'clock, then I'm going to set the alarm at six. That way I've got about four or five snoozes in me so that I can slowly sort of coax myself awake because I'm not a morning person and I don't really like to get out of bed. And so if I just sort of like coax myself out of bed, then by the time I've hit the snooze button four or five times, and then I really have to get out of bed at seven, like I got no choice, then I'll be ready to get out of bed. When you're that kind of person, When you set the alarm an hour earlier than you need to wake up because you know you are so bad at waking up that you've got to hit the snooze button that many times, are you making your life easier? No. Think about what it feels like to be in that bed with me right now. Because every time that alarm rings and then you hit the snooze button and then you drift off to sleep again and then the alarm goes off. You have to go through that whole process of, oh my God, awake, and then the resistance, and then the hitting the snooze, and then the falling back asleep, and only falling back asleep for nine minutes, and then the alarm goes off again, and then, oh my God, here we are in this. And yet, and yet, we're in that bed, right? And the alarm goes off. And here's the false confidence. That false confidence is in the bed with you, and it's basically luring you into making a stupid decision. Because somehow as you're laying in bed and you know that hitting the snooze button four times and rotting away in that bed for an hour, that it is not magically setting you up for success, of course you know it's impacting your mood and your productivity and your sense of control and it makes you feel terrible. But false confidence kicks in and you literally believe that this is the best way for you to get up, that this is the great idea. Oh, you know, starting the day with a decision to procrastinate, getting out of bed, that's a good idea. I wouldn't recommend it to a friend or to my sibling. I wouldn't want to hire somebody or date somebody who starts their day like this. But for me, my false confidence is telling me that this does not impact me. And I say this because this used to be me. I used to be person A. Not only did I not feel motivated to get out of bed, I deluded myself into thinking that this wasn't a big deal. It's a huge deal. The decision that you make when the alarm rings every morning is a huge deal. Let me explain shocking research to you. Laying in bed increases anxiety and depression fivefold compared to pushing yourself out of bed when the alarm rings. This is research-based. So if anxiety and depression is what's keeping you in bed longer in the morning, like it used to keep me in bed longer in the morning, you better pay attention to this. This will change your life. Laying in bed, rotting in bed, hitting the snooze alarm, it is making your anxiety and depression worse. 
This comes from research at the University of South Carolina. They conducted this study that was published in the Journal of Sleep Medicine and Disorders. And here's what I love about this study. They used all kinds of tools to measure what was happening. This isn't just a study where they were asked. This isn't just a study where they limited the research to asking people how they felt. Yeah, they asked them how they felt, but they actually had all this tech to determine what was going on in people's bodies from sleep trackers to physical monitors to questionnaires to heart and rate blood pressure tracking to blood work, all of which was tracking what was happening. And in this study, here's what they did. They forced one group of people to lay in bed longer than they usually did. And then another group of people to get right out of bed when the alarm rang. Here's what they found. For the people who laid in bed longer, depression and anxiety went up five-fold compared to the group that got out of bed when the alarm rang. Inflammation, which was measured by blood work, went up twofold for the people who laid in bed. So that false confidence that saying, oh, well, laying here, it actually makes me feel good. I really need to lay here. This is what my false confidence lied and told me. Uh, it's affecting your mental health and your well-being, period. Making the decision to get out of bed when the alarm rings improves your mental health. It improves your well-being. It has such a positive impact. It actually lowers inflammation. And let me hit you with another piece of research. If you're somebody that's a chronic snoozer, research shows that you waste four work weeks a year by snoozing. Uh-huh. This comes from a study that was done by researchers at the University of Notre Dame. It was published in the prestigious sleep journal from Oxford University Press. And this study it is the jackpot of snoozing information. It is the biggest study ever done on snoozing. They had people in the study wear wearable technology for over a year. And there's so much to unpack from this study that I'm going to do an entirely separate episode on the topic of rotting in bed and snoozing because this is a thing and I really want to dig deep into the research. But for the purposes of the decision I want you to make starting tomorrow, the decision to wake up when the alarm rings and get out of bed, I want to share one key finding. The average time that people spend snoozing before they get themselves out of bed is 26.93 minutes. That's 27 minutes. That totals 164 hours a year. That's more than four work weeks of time. This is proving my point that an easy decision in the moment, which is to stay in bed or hit the snooze button, makes your life hard. But a hard decision to get out of bed when the alarm rings makes your life easier. What would you do if you got the equivalent of a month off of work? What would you do with that time? False confidence. It's killing your mornings. I'm serious about this. False confidence is showing up in three places every single morning. And it's very sneaky, by the way.